Hi, I'm Neil Cresswell, and I'm with the Kickstarter Watches and Horology Microbrands group on Facebook. Bit of a mouthful, but I promise it's a uh, fun place to be. Um, so if you just go to Facebook and hit uh, Kickstarter Watches, you'll probably find us. Um, so we're a uh, Facebook group, uh, pretty friendly, where we are representing backers' interests for people who are interested in buying microbrand watches. So we're non-commercial, we don't allow... Uh, brands to advertise in there. Um, of course, somebody likes a brand, they can write about it, and we can uh, review brands on Kickstarter, but we also look at other brands too. So today I've got an unboxing, of course, um, and I'm really excited about this one for several reasons, uh, because it's something a little bit different to what I would normally cover, and the reason I'm covering it is we're going to give one of these away in the group. Um, it's a donation from Phantom's Lab. Uh, and it's the Boneyard series. So I'm going to have one model here. There are actually four models. Um, I'll just quickly cover those on the screen before we get into this. To, and the winner of the giveaway is going to be uh, be able to choose from any one of these four models. So it's an automatic movement watch. It's skeletonized, a partial skeleton movement. Uh, it's got some nice features. Um, not seen it, and I'm going to be giving my usual unbiased reviews. So. Uh, if I don't like it, I'm actually going to tell you all things that I don't like, um, as well as things that I do like, of course. And just to be totally transparent and clear about things, I also run a uh, watch store, the Microbrand watch store. And uh, this watch is not in the store. It's not one I'm going to ever carry. I have no relationship with these uh, people who kind of donated this watch for our giveaway competition. So this is definitely not a promotion anyway. It's a review and we'll see uh, first impressions review and we'll see because it's something a little bit different to what I would normally cover. So um, I don't even know how this is going to go. So hopefully for them it will go well, but, but we'll see. So the four colors that we have, um, they've got interesting names. There's a frostbite, which is predominantly a white one with a uh, kind of black highlights and includes a black PVD case. All the cases are 316 stainless steel, of course. Uh, but black PVD. Um, and then there's the Profit, which I'm hoping is this one, because I kind of dropped a hint, I kind of like that one more, um, Personal Taste, which is also kind of a, a predominantly black colored watch with uh, red highlights, but it's on stainless steel. I usually prefer stainless steel because if I scratch it, it can polish it out more easily. Um, occasionally I'll go for black PVD, it just depends on the look really. Uh, and then uh, there's the Necromancer, which is a third in the series. That's also black with red highlights, but it's kind of got a gold case. So it's kind of, I'm not sure if it's rose gold or gold. We'll take a look at the pictures or maybe I'll put it in the comments. Uh, but basically a golden color case, and that's obviously PVD as well. Um, and then the fourth and final one is the Grave Dicker, a kind of interesting name considering we have skeleton watches. And that's uh, another mostly black with red. Um, Highlight, red highlights, uh, but it's a black PVD. So it's different to the Frostbite, which is white with black PVD. Um, so four in the series. I uh, don't know what I got here. Excited to get into it. It's going to be a little bit of a challenge for me. I do like skeleton watches, but I really tend to go for like uh, ETA Unitas type, um, you know, more traditional um, hand-wound movements that are kind of large and uh, maybe a, kind of a refined rather than a louder look. And I can tell from, you know, these images that I put up that it's a little bit, you know, the watches we have here are more modern, uh, modern take on things, not the style I'd go for, but it doesn't mean it's not a good watch or an interesting watch. And I, I really want to look at it from a backer's perspective. If you like the style, you're going to choose on that first anyway, and try and get into whether it's good or not. So not how I haven't opened this box. I did remove the outer wrapping, um, just had to cut through the plastic, wanted to save some time. So let's get stuck in and see what we get here. This kind of box did kind of fall apart a bit, but it looks like we got something on the inside, which is in a pretty good condition. So there we are, phantoms. And what do I have here? Uh, it looks like a very large, uh, soft, it, I don't know if that's a mouse mat or a um, cleaning cloth. It's too thin for a mouse mat. I think it's a cleaning cloth. I actually have a very similar one for my, <laughs> ironically underneath this, but for my own brand, which uh, is more typical. It's a small 15 centimeter or so one here. So the fact that they've given me a much larger one is, is nice. I didn't expect that. Um, larger is easier for cleaning, for sure. 
or maybe that's kind of a display stand. I'm going to use this right now, get my one out of the way, and just use this to uh, put the watch on. Um, this is not the one we're giving away, to be clear. It's one they've sent to me to review. And the one we're giving away, you pick, basically. It's a giveaway competition. We'll probably make it easy, like add a few people to the group or something like that, or some fun game. And then we'll, we'll just... Uh, pick a winner after a couple of weeks and somebody's going to win one of these and these are not necessarily cheap the retail on this they're selling them on their uh, online store for 590 US dollars so you're going to get a $600 watch uh, which is pretty neat so this feels heavy I think the first thing I'm going to do when I get this out is weigh it before I even get into things I've taken the lid off um, well wow. front comes down but I've also noticed this on the top this this is different I don't normally get this split and can you see here, this is split as well. Oh, oh this is definitely a, an interesting case. They've made an effort on this. It's not wood. I mean, it's a nice cardboard box, but the case here is, um, just in case you're giving it as a gift, it's a plastic material that has a woven texture on the top, but I would say <laughs> sniff test. Um, doesn't really smell, which is good, because sometimes you get things out of China that's a little bit stinky. Um, so it's it's definitely an interesting box. I'm really how does this open up like a concertina or something? Oh wow, yeah, it does. That is really cool. So I think that's one of the coolest boxes I've actually seen. Um, so I'm already liking the watch. If it's going to be a gift or something, it's kind of uh, a bit loose inside. No, it's it's fixed. Uh, so what do I have in here? I won't spend too long on this. You're going to get a plastic warranty card with a warranty number which is of it's got a serial number of course but there's no warranty number or date of purchase because this is a demo version don't know if it's been to someone else first may have been banged around but hopefully i think it's new i did ask them to send me the exact packaging uh, uh same as production so you can see um and then you've got a manual which is chinese on one side and english on the other are there any other languages? Nope, it's English and Chinese, so you've got a choice of two, but it's going to be the usual stuff. Um, I'm probably not even going to refer to this. Uh, maybe it's got some interesting warranty details that I can flick through really quickly. Small text. I'm uh, short-sighted, so I need a new pair of glasses for that. So uh, warranty, I don't really know, um, but anyway, this is a giveaway, but you can go on the site and we can maybe dig that information up for you because... Uh, we'll certainly share that once we know. Um, oops, sorry, bang the camera there. Sorry about that. So I'm just throwing these things to one side, and this is what I'm really interested in. So a little cover on there. It, it's a cardboardy, plasticky thing, uh, rough edged a little bit here, but it looks good. Um, and you've got a pillow inside. Again, this is a plastic pillow, but it's actually convenient if you can have it on a shelf or something and not in the box. I probably wouldn't keep it in this box. Um, and then this is the watch. So I'm going to have a closer look at the watch. I'll put it on the pillow for now. Let's get this box out of the way. That is really cool how it opened. Um, definitely enjoyed that a lot. And I haven't forgotten we're going to weigh this thing first. So, I'm gonna, you know, I don't trust online specs so much these days when they tell you weight. And I don't want to do the weight in the box. So let's see. I'm going to do this in grams for people or, or kilograms and grams. So it's a hundred and forty grams on the nose, so uh, that's pretty cool. It's not too bad. It doesn't weigh too heavy, but I didn't want it to be too light either, because uh, kind of in would indicate an issue with the um, components in the movement. If it's an automatic, if it's too light, so we'll get maybe dimensions next. In fact, let's do the whole range of tests here. We're going to do size, uh, sapphire glass size. Do a quick UV as well. Um, just get stuck in and well, let's uh, get our first impression. I've, I've never even seen this one. So this one is predominantly black with a stainless steel case. Um, and it's also got uh, some red highlights. So this is the Prophet, I believe. And it actually looks kind of decent to me. Um, it's look looking like very sharp on the hands. I'm guessing those are um, laser. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty well finished uh, quality wise. I wasn't sure what to expect to be honest, and here's the reason why. And I'll jump into this right away. One thing I wasn't so sure I would like about this. I'll go through the spec in a sec. 
uh, it's a seagull movement. So those can be hit or miss. Um, I'm actually wearing a really nice seagull movement now, I, deliberately, because I knew I'm doing this review. This one on my wrist is a hand-wound wound seagull movement. And the reason it's hit or miss, this is a Chinese movement. Um, but don't let that put you off. There are actually, I think, three brands in China that are half decent. Uh, uh, to slash decent, depending on which models you get of their movements. And this particular hammer one, an ST19, ST1901, is descended directly from a Swiss Venus 175. In fact, they bought the parts as well as the design. So they bought the machinery to make this as well as the design. So, you know, this one's a really decent one from Seagull. It's one of my favorite movements. Um, if I was to start this chronograph running, <laughs> you get to see a lot of things going on. It was my favorite Kickstarter from last year. So... Um, I really like this and I'm just wearing this really just to make a point that you can get some good ones. But, you know, caveat emptor, buyer beware, be careful because there's some not so good ones too. So I have been spending a little bit of time talking to the creator behind this because obviously that worried me. And he's telling me these are AA grade and it also depends where they're manufactured. So uh, some Seagull automatic movements are not so good. Um, they're built well, but, you know, maybe the environment's not so clean and other ones are really good. So, you know, this guy has pretty good contacts in the industry over there. So I'm thinking, um, you know, if it is AA grade, it's certainly well finished on the outside, extremely well done. I'm going to take this cover off. Um, so my first impression feels nice and weighty, feels solid, really sharp cut in on, on the indices, nothing looks wibbly wobbly or, or cheaply done. I was actually expecting it to be not as good as this, I'll be honest. Um, and I'm not trying to put a plug in for this. Uh, in fact, let's just wind this a little bit. So presumably it's a screw down crown because it's a 100 meter water rating. Yep, it is a screw down. So see how many stop positions has it got? Because there's no date. One stop position. That's good. Oh, what's not so good is there's a little bit of play in that position, but that's okay. Um, the hands go around pretty evenly. Of course, there's no minute markers on this. You just got the five minute markers. But you know, it's really an interesting style. I'll just put them out the way there. So push that in, wind it a bit. Interesting how it winds. So I don't know if anybody else bothered about this kind of stuff. This kind of stuff always bothers me. Um, I get some Salita SW200s. That's got a very raspy, rind, windy feel to it. And the opposite end of the spectrum for a similar spec watch would be an ETA. And that's always got a very smooth feel to it. This is kind of halfway between the two. So if you're used to those two Swiss movements. So it feels quality uh, there's a little bit of resistance but not too much so i think you know it feels pretty good i'm seeing um almost an open heart there uh which is nice but it's not really a true skeleton on the front but the fact that it's got all these multiple layers and skeletonized pieces it's interesting um i actually pleased i've sent this i'm hoping i'll be able to keep it at the end but i never ask until uh, I'm done with my review because that way I don't bias the review in any way. In fact, I don't ask. I just wait for them to tell me. So that's actually pretty nice on the inside. don't know if you can see that. It's definitely skeletonized on the back. And okay, it has got a rotor. It's got a nice, nicely finished on the rotor with some good cutouts. You can see what's going on. So it's not going to be as good as a hand wound that I was showing you just now because you're always going to have a rotor in the way. But as far as uh, finishing goes, blued screws, nothing too special back there. It's a little plain in some places, but you've got the variation in color with the different uh, kind of brass and steel. I actually like this. It's in keeping with the rest of the watch design. So I actually like this watch. I didn't think I would like it as much. It's not as of, as uh, aggressive as it looks on the on their website for sure. Uh, let's look at the strap. Uh, I haven't even got into measurements, but I am looking at this now. So um, the strap feels a little plasticky. Not sure about the material. I'll go look that up if they've said. Um, sorry, sniff test. Sniff everything. Um, it's not got any particular markings. Normally, if it's some kind of real leather, it says at least genuine leather or, or leather or something like that or Italian grain. It could be a nice one. Uh, put that on the wrist in a minute. Got the tag there, which if I 
I'll take that off later. But it's got an interesting uh, clasp on it too. I'm not used to this. I mean, I'm used to butterfly clasp, but this one's a little different. So uh, let's get that plastic off. Okay, so it's got a very, it's got a phantom signature on the buckle. Oh, and this is one thing that kind of bugged me a bit. Phantom's lab uh, belongs to the Phantom, and it's his lab, I guess, uh, as opposed to Phantom Labs, which is what I expected. So it's a push-button release here, I think. Yes, okay, cool. And then so it goes in like this. You got some and it closes. Yep, and then it locks. Okay, that's different. Um, definitely different. Okay, so I it was me. I screwed up. It's not a QA issue, um, but you can just tell this is a live review by the fact that I don't really know what I'm doing with this uh, style of strap, the grip strap, as opposed to something else. So how easy is, is it to adjust this? I'm going to take this off in a second, but give you an idea uh, what it looks like on the wrist. I've got a seven and a half inch wrist, which is exactly medium for a man. Um, uh, you know, kind of typical Western guy. Um, so it sits really well. I've got a bit of play the side in terms of uh, if I had a thinner wrist, uh, seven inch wouldn't be a problem, I think. I don't know about six and a half inches or under. It is a larger watch. This is supposed to be a 45 millimeter diameter. And you've also got an interesting cut to the case. It's not just round, so you can see that. I actually like the case design a lot. It's, it's nicely done. Uh, the strap colors are nice. I'm just pushing this on my hand. It actually feels comfortable. So uh, strap is comfortable. Um, don't know if I would try a different strap to start with. I've got a ton of straps. I might take some photos later um, and put them up on, on a site in comments or something. Um, but yeah, so I was... <laughs> I'm not going to play with this clasp anymore, but obviously it needs to be adjusted uh, to the right length, um, and I'll probably spend 10 minutes doing that. You want to get on with the review. So let's get some dimensions out of the way. In fact, let's get this off the clasp, uh, just going to be easier. So that's off there, and that's locked. So now we just have a look at the watch. So uh, dimension-wise, first one I'm going to go for is the height. Uh, it is a flat sapphire crystal on top. Oh, let's finish the specs. Sapphire crystal, which we'll test, uh, not just on the top but underneath. Very nice touch. I'm loving that skeletonized back actually. Um, so sapphire crystal, hundred meter water rating, so you can go swimming with it. Um, maybe uh, you know skin diving, something like that. But but I wouldn't. You know, it's not going to be the same as a two hundred or a three hundred meter watch, but certainly adequate for water sports. So sapphire with an anti-refractive coating on the front, forgot to mention that. It's supposed to be 45 millimeter diameter, excluding the crown. I think that's a nine millimeter crown there. Um, and a 52 millimeter lug to lug width, uh, which we'll check. Uh, and 24 millimeter width here, which is nice. 24 is good. If I'm going 45 or higher, maybe 46, I want 24. Sometimes you get 22. Um, so 44 is nice, and the thickness of that looks to be at least three millimeters. Um, it does feel pretty hard here, so uh, it was it's either padding or some insert there. I can kind of feel it down to there, and then it gets soft. Yes, yeah, so you've got an insert, but it's sat on the wrist very comfortably. Um, let's see. Uh, so the uh, movement here is a Seagull automatic AA grade. Uh, so it's a 21 joule movement, 38 hour power reserve. I'm watching the second hand. I haven't actually, don't actually know whether this is high beat or low beat, but looking at it, it's a little bit. Yeah, I'm getting the impression it's a low beat, so it'll be, uh, you know, uh, six beats per second as opposed to a high beat. Well, that's not a bad thing because it means it will uh, go longer between services, which is a a good thing when you have a um, a movement such as a seagull because. Uh, uh, one thing to keep in mind is if it's not a common movement over where you may be, then it may be harder to get it serviced. So, um, but I guess you're probably looking more than five years out on something like this, I would hope. So let's see. Um, we've covered everything apart from the uh, sizes. So we'll get into those. So the height is always the one that gets me on a watch because they don't include the crystal when it's domed. But this one is flat, but I'm going to include... So I just do that. 13.6, that's very nice for an automatic. You know, uh, for this size, it can be up to 16 millimeters. 
uh, including any dome, and there's no dome, so it should be like 40 millimeters or less. The strap thickness is three and a half, so it's kind of close on that. Goes down to three once you get away from that padding. Um, approximate lug to lug, I'm going to take their word for it, but I'm going to include the very ends of the lugs if I can. Yeah, 50, yeah it's, it's what they said, 52. That'll be 24. I'm going to go. It's not going to be. It, will, it thins as you move away. Yeah, 23.6. That's going to be 24. Um, so everything seems to be spot on, and the height is very reasonable too. And the one thing we do need to do is uh, a test, make sure that it's uh, sapphire glass. Um, and let's get a loom thing going on this. I want to see how long the loom lasts. One thing I don't like about this. Um, in terms of specs, and it's not a big negative necessarily, but it's not Swift Super Luminova. So it's some third-party loom. So how good is the loom? I'm not even going to turn the lights off. I just want to see what glows and how long it glows for. So quick UV light. I didn't time that. 10 seconds. Um, it, interesting. I'd normally keep a glow when I come in a room with that. Let me just uh, hit the lights. I'll be right back. I won't hit all the lights, but just... Uh some of the lighting, see if we get uh... no, not getting a glow on that at all so it doesn't seem to hold the loom too well you can see where it is loomed from the UV light, you've got the uh, tips of the uh, minute and hour hand and you've got the um, index markers all around the outside and they are keeping a bit of a glow but it fades super fast so not a good loom I think um, I'm always honest in my reviews here so um, Again, that's not the definitive test. What I'm thinking is how long does it keep the loom? If I was to shine a UV light on uh, a different watch, not even this one, it might not even be Swiss Super Luminova, but just for comparison, I shine the UV light on it, turn it off, it's still glowing green. Um, and it takes a, you know, a few seconds to fade, and that was just from a second or two, uh, where this one faded right away. So um, probably not a long-lasting loom, but again, that's not a definitive test. Um, it doesn't mean it's a bad watch because I think it's really well built um, and the ex exhibition case back really does show off an interesting movement. It's the first time I had a good look at this automatic movement, um, to be honest. Um, interesting strap. Uh, I do like the strap because I've been thinking about this. Not used to it, so of course I screwed up. But um, having a strap with no holes means you can get the exact length you want. So that's a, a nice thing. Um, doesn't feel like it's a quality strap, you know, in terms of uh, full grain. It could be something like a full grain, but it feels unusually smooth. I don't even know if this is actually uh, leather, to be completely candid with you. It could be very well, nicely done leather, and I could be maligning them there. So I'll probably send them a note before I actually put this review out. And so look at the comments, please do. Um, so the other one we wanted to do was the sapphire glass test, and this takes a few seconds to warm up. Uh, so we'll just wait till the light goes out, then I can test it. Um, and it's supposed to be sapphire glass on the back, which is unusual and nice to see, as well as on the front. Um, not seeing too bad a reflection, by the way, so, so that's pretty decent. I'll just put this down until it's ready. Um, I think we've probably covered everything else on this. I do like the watch. It's a good value for a giveaway. Um, I'll put the link up too if anybody's interested in buying one of these. It's um, well, it's just nicer than I thought. Um, I definitely think um, you know it, it's very well done on the inside. I see a lot of polishing there, um, and I can see why it's the price point that it's at. Um, just a quick word about skeleton movements in general. Um, for example, there's one coming out from uh, one of our favorite micro brands, Sue and Zelos. Um, where he has the same movement that's skeletonized in one case and not in the other and the price is double for the skeletonized because you have to do a lot more work with these parts in here they have to be specially made or machined um, you know or, or, or adapted so there's a lot more going on that adds to the cost for the production so you know if this wasn't skeletonized six hundred dollars would be a little bit high for a seagull but for a seagull automatic uh, that is uh, partially skeletonized it's it's kind of in the right ballpark. Um, maybe I would have liked to have seen slightly less, but that is a retail price. We're not talking Kickstarter pricing. Um, 
so let's see. Uh, we should be ready for testing. Uh, lamp on battery okay, lamp okay ready. So let's let's give this a test. If this lights up any bars at all, like typically three or four bars, uh, then it's going to be sapphire glass. If it doesn't light up, then it's not sapphire glass. So I definitely get three or four bars on the front. That's sapphire glass. Um, and on the back here... Oh, that's cool. I you know to get sapphire glass on the front and back, so everything is as has been promised. Um, feel kind of embarrassed a bit about the strap uh, in terms of making that mistake. Um, it's certainly a sturdy looking strap, uh, but you know, just giving my first impression here, the boxing was excellent. Uh, I think this is going to make a nice gift, guys. So I do wish you luck in the competition. The link is there if you're not a member of the group yet and you see this uh, review come out beforehand, then uh, feel free to jump in. Uh, it's open to anyone to take part who's a, who's a member. And I, I wish everyone luck, and we'll have a drawing. Uh, we'll have this competition up probably a week or so after this review, and we'll have a drawing um, once the competition's been announced about two weeks later. So uh, nice job, Phantoms. I uh, First time I've seen this style of watch, and... Uh, I actually think I'm going to keep this once I got the uh, strap adjusted. Looks kind of nice. Okay, well, I didn't think I'd like it so much, but I definitely do. So um, that's me, and if you've got any questions, just go ahead, uh, put them in the comments, and I'll be sure to address them. Thanks a lot.